Hey, I'm Rob Gant with the Goose Creek Gazette and the Berkeley Independent. I am here today at the Somerville Journal Scene offices with my teammate Roger Lee of the Somerville Journal Scene. Uh, we are excited to be announcing our third annual Best of Prep Sports Awards winners today. Normally we get together for football talk. Today we're getting together uh, to virtually uh, you know, let some kids know that they've won some hardware for their efforts. And you know, it's definitely, you know, we would love to be in person with you. Uh, obviously with COVID-19 concerns, we've had to do things virtually like a lot of other people, the Tonight Show, et cetera, et cetera, right. et cetera. Um, it's been a difficult time, you know, when kids went to school in March, uh, I don't think they realized that that was gonna be the last day, but it ended up being that last day, spring sports got cut short. Uh, but we you know, we felt compelled to try to honor the athletes as best that we could. And um, having this virtual show here this year was the way we decided to do it. Uh, Roger, uh, without further ado, uh, I am going to turn it over to you. We're going to start with our fall sports first. And Roger, your team's dominated in the fall, so uh, let's get it started. All right, yeah, I'm glad to be here honoring some high school athletes. So. We're going to start off with our volleyball player of the year award that goes to um, Ashley Ridge senior, oh, Ashley Ridge junior, Allie Atkinson. Uh, she was an All-State player, named the Region Eight Player of the Year, a uh, contributor on you know both uh, the attack and the defense, uh, well deserving. And you know I think we need to say up front, uh, each one of these awards there could have been a, there's some other athletes who who could have been named that 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 player of the year that for that sport uh it's tough narrowing these down but uh you know i like the list we have and you know ali was a good candidate for our absolutely and we'll, we'll only do this one time uh each of our award winners will receive a plaque just like this we'll have them at our office um at 103 journal alley uh, but we'll get to that later uh ali At ali atkinson congratulations on your award and uh we look forward to seeing you when you come get it all right who's next uh, next up is our Girls Swimmer of the Year. That's going to an, an Ashley Ridge athlete, senior Abby Hassel. Abby led the, the Ashley Ridge girls to a top 10 performance at the state swim meet this year. Uh, she had a pair of top three finishes. Uh, that would have been in the 50 yard freestyle and the 100 style free. Um, she is uh, also already signed to swim in college. So congratulations, Allie, uh, Abby, Abby Hassel. Um, the boys swimmer of the year, uh, swimmer of the year award is going to a Pinewood athlete. Uh, but he also won it last year. Uh, but Daniel Grimes had a fabulous season this year. Uh, won two state championships at the Skeezer State Meet. Also set a new school record. Uh, Daniel uh, won the 50 free and the 100 free. Uh, in the 50 free, he set the new Pinewood record that he just barely missed last season. So congratulations to uh, Daniel Grimes. Moving forward, we're going to cross country. We'll start with our girls cross country runner of the year. She is a junior at Hanahan High School. She placed fourth out of 140 runners in the class 3A state meet in November. She posted a time of 1930-51. Um, she has earned all region honors and all state honors. Uh, she, it was a continuation of what she did in the spring when she was a superstar track athlete. She finished uh, third in the state. Uh, this young lady's name is Hannah Johnson. She's a junior from Hanahan High School. She is our girls cross country runner of the year. Our boys cross country runner of the year uh, is uh, a fabulous athlete. He is from Cane Bay High School and he is a senior. He is headed to Elon University to continue his studies and his athletic career, which in just a second, you're gonna hear how fabulous it's been. Uh, this runner won the 5A state championship this past season with a state record time of eight or 15 minutes, 18 seconds, uh, 0.42. He also has a cross country title to his credit when he was at another school, Palmetto Scholars Academy. Um, and he continued he picked up where he left off last spring when he won a state championship in track and field. Our boys cross country runner of the year is Zane Jackson from Cane Bay High School. All right, All right. we're gonna to go to the uh, girls golfer of the year, Pinewood's Anna Parker. She is a four year starter, senior for the, for the Lady Panthers golf team. Um, she placed third at the Skeeza State uh, Golf Tournament with a two round score of 160. 
um, 4.8 GPA on top of that. Um, helped the Panthers to a 12 and two record, only two losses, uh, you know, when and they play a, a lot of uh, out of the area teams uh, in golf. So uh, that's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, so congratulations to Anna Parker. Um, next up is our girls tennis player of the year award. That's going to Ashley Ridge freshman, Caroline Jackie. Um, she led the, the Swamp Foxes to a historic season this year. They had their best run in the state playoffs. Um, they won the region championship, sweeping uh, the region. Um, she was the number one player for them. Um, had finished the season with a 16-2 and record. Um, and also, um, let's see, nope. That was the team record. Ashley Ridge's team record was 16 and two, pretty impressive. Her record was 13 and four, playing in the number one spot. And she went on to represent um, Ashley Ridge in the individual state tournament. So congratulations to Caroline Jackie. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot from that young freshman in the future. Definitely. Uh, okay, next up is our competitive cheerleader of the year award. Fort Dorchester's Ashlyn Granger. Um, has been a top performer for uh, the Patriots for several years. Uh, she is going to be, she is a rising senior this summer, so she still has one more year with the program. Um, she led Fort Dorchester into the state uh, championships this year, and there were only two low country teams there. Uh, there was Fort Dorchester and then there was Wando. Uh, so that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, if you've never been to a cheer meet, you really ought to go. That's, those girls do a, a nice job uh, with the, some of the things they do. It, re it really is exciting yeah, to watch. Yeah, it, it is kind of fun to watch. Like, Definitely. Yeah. Uh, if you catch one on TV, sometimes the college nationals, that's pretty good. You see a girl just getting thrown like 200 feet in the air, and yeah, other girls yeah. are gathering on her to catch her. It's, 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 it's a tough sport now. And that, and that's one thing about Ash, Ashlyn. Uh, she is both a flyer and a tumbler. That's, that's one of the reasons she, she garnered this award. Uh, you know, she can, she can do either one, and she kind of takes some of the younger uh, cheerleaders under her wing and, and, and provides leadership for the team as well. Also competes uh, with uh, PAC Athletics in, uh, you know, not high school cheerleading, and they've, they've done some pretty impressive things, won a national tournament down in Texas. Uh, so congratulations to Ashlyn Granger. Congrats. Okay, uh, here's a big award for us, the Football Player of the Year. Obviously, Rob, we had several candidates for this, right? I mean, honestly, there were, there were probably a, a good five or six that could have said, hey, I deserve that plaque. I agree. Uh, what we decided on, I, I think you can't go wrong with this guy, Manny Johnson, Fort Dorchester senior, defensive end. He was just a wrecking crew for, for the Fort defense. Uh, you know, everybody knows what the Fort's done the last couple of years. Uh, they, did, they didn't, uh, you know, they, they didn't make it all the way to the big game, but they certainly had some dominant performances while getting there. Uh, Manny had 90 tackles, including 12 sacks and uh, whew, 30 tackles for a <laughs> loss. Man, that's, that's something. Um, he signed with Georgia Tech. Um, he also carries like a, I don't know what his GPA is, but LaPrade told me once that it was above 4.0, so he's a smart young gentleman uh, looking for big things. Uh, he was a uh, most valuable player for the North-South game this year and uh, made the, uh, oh, uh, no, not all state, was named the Region 8 Player of the Year. Congratulations to Manny Johnson. Looking forward to seeing that guy playing at Georgia Tech. Would like to add, he actually started his career at Northwood Academy. Did you know that? I did know that. Yes. I knew he was a man among boys at that time, and he, you know, he. I saw him play this year uh, against Kane Bay, actually, and he just, he literally was a man playing against boys. Yes, yes, an impressive uh, frame that that for, man for has. sure. I mean, he's going to Georgia Tech, so he's smart and he's good at football. Uh, well, that concludes the fall portion of our awards. And now we turn the page to our winter sports, basketball and wrestling. Um, all three of those came from Berkeley County. Uh, starting off with our girls basketball player of the year. She is a senior at Goose Creek High School. She averaged 13 plus points a game, almost a handful of assists, always around the ball, um, stealing the balls uh, from other teams. 
Um, she powered the Gators to their third state championship in four years. She has signed a scholarship to go to Francis Marion University, um, you know, ask what their legacy was after the state championship game. This young lady said, it's winning, that's it. I hope we passed it down to the younger kids. And um, without a question, they did. Our girls basketball player of the year is from Goose Creek High School, a senior, senior guard, Anaya Oliver. All right, in boys basketball, we have a young man who is a junior from St. John's Christian Academy, and I've seen this young man play sports and football, uh, basketball, and when he on the floor and on the field, he is clearly one of the better athletes at that level. Uh, this year, he is our boys basketball player of the year. Uh, coach, his coach called him a scoring machine. Uh, this young man averaged over 22 points a game for the Cavaliers. He topped 30, he reached 30 points at least six times, and uh, he ended his season with a 36-point outburst in the playoffs. Uh, this young's man, young man's name is Narayan Bookert from St. John's Christian. He is a junior. You will hear more about him moving forward. Uh, side note, he helped, he helped get St. John's Christian to the eight-man state championship game last year in football, too. Our wrestler of the year is a sophomore from Timberland High School. This young man... Uh, compiled a wonderful 49-3 and record, and he captured a state championship on 145 pounds. And at the state meet, all he did was take all of his guys out by pinfall. First two guys, first period pins, lightning quick type of just uh, moves on them. Got him pinned. One then got to the then got to the championship match. Uh, the young man he was competing against was another strong competitor. Pushed him to the third period, but uh, this this young man from Timberland uh, got it done via pinfall. He is a state champion. Uh, he finished the record. He finished the year with a 49-3 record, and he's also a accomplished football player for the Timberland Wolves. This young man's name is Roman Wadford. He's from Timberland High School, and he is our wrestler of the year. And that leads us into our spring sports. All right. <laughs> that takes us to our boys soccer player of the year. Uh, that's going to a Somerville High School senior, Sam Rasner. Uh, Four-time varsity letterman for the Green Wave. Um, has, has done a little bit of everything for the Green Wave. The last couple of years, he settled into a midfield position and a striker uh, and has had a lot of success with that. I think we were just really starting to see what Sam was capable of when they canceled the season. Uh, that's too bad, but he certainly uh, looks good out there on the soccer field. Um, got nominations from, from more than one coach. That says a lot to me when, when that happens. Uh, it usually happens on one or two of these categories a year, no more than that. So I always kind of kind of pay attention when I get a lot of nominations for the same kid. Um, you know, Somerville only suffer, suffered one preseason loss and they went two and two in the regular season, but those, uh, one of those losses was to Wando by one goal. The other one was also a one, no, it was in penalty kicks. So um, Sam was on track to really do something with the Green Wave soccer team this year, I think. Um, and he's certainly uh, well deserving of this, year, this award. Um, he is planning to attend uh, Clemson, I believe. Yes, Clemson in the fall on a life scholarship. Uh, no word if he's going to try to walk on or not, but uh, he might just be focusing on his academics. Go but Tigers. Congratulations. Go Tigers. <laughs> I got to say that. Go Tigers. And, 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 Clem and Clemson soccer is definitely one of the top programs in the country in NCAA. So right, right. If, if he is, is able to walk on there, he, that's the real deal. Yeah, and like I said, I don't know if that's, that's something he even wants to try. He might be focusing on academics. Who knows? Right. Uh, uh, jumping over to the girls' side of soccer. Um, uh, another senior is getting the Girls Soccer Player of the Year award, and that would be Sloan Weaver. Um, also a four-year varsity letterman. Uh, she's been a midfielder. Uh, her strengths are just, you know, ball possession and, and setting up, scoring. She, you know, she wasn't necessarily the leading scorer all four years, but uh, she was very valuable to that team. And uh, oddly enough, another, another person who got two nominations from from different coaches so uh, all right I said let's look at her uh, but she was you know uh, named to the preseason Viking Cup tournament all tournament team um, just an all-around solid player and uh, Sloan is planning to go to uh, Tritic Tech College in the fall 
and pursue a degree in respiratory therapy, uh, which these days sounds like a pretty good plan, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, a little side note, my stepson goes to try it. It's a great school. Okay, well, good. Yeah, yeah right. I, I, I know a lot of people who've been to try it and are happy with the education they got there. Definitely, so. no doubt. All right. All right. Uh, I believe that brings us to our baseball player of the year, uh, Fort Dorchester senior. Jalen Vasquez, uh, probably uh, definitely if you're a Patriots fan, you know that name, but he's a shortstop. Uh, provides a lot of spark to the team, good bat, he can pitch. Um, he has signed to play with the Gamecocks next school year. Um, team most valuable player in 2019. Um, uh, during seven games this year, he batted, uh, had a 3.89 batting average uh, with six walks and 10 runs. So. Um, you know, looking forward to seeing what that young man can do in college, and 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 you have to look back. That's one of the sports, especially. You have to look back at what they did last year in 2019. The Patriots had a historic season for their baseball program. They they uh, kind of returned to prominence, if you will, won the first region championship for that program in some years. And Jalen was a huge part of that, both on the pitcher's mound at the plate. And you know, at shortstop, you, you got to have a good shortstop if you're gonna if you're gonna win a region championship. Right, so. and you know, and I, I need to stop you and call you out here. I think you were too excited to say he was a South Carolina Gamecock because you skipped me on the list. If you viewers won't know, but you you skipped me on the list. Oh, uh, did I? Yes, you did. What were we supposed to do? Uh, girls and boys track, and then softball. Oh well, I yeah. know why you did it because the boys are going to South Carolina, and you're excited about it. I, that's anyway. what it is. I was excited about you know, another another local. I can't escape another SEC local homers. kid going to USC. You're so. an SEC homer. All right. Uh, so are we done? Are we done? Okay, we're done. I'm sorry I skipped over you, Rob. But no offense to our to our track athletes because obviously, the, you know, in some ways they're the most athletic athletes you have. So yeah, uh, please do tell us about the, he, the track. Award if, the, winners. if the young man had been going to Georgia, there's no telling what would have happened. Oh uh, well, I would have. We would have led with that if he was going to Georgia. All right. Uh, okay. We have. We, we digress. Uh, girls track and field athlete of the year uh, is a senior from Hanahan High School. She was off to a blazing start this spring. She had reached the top of the awards podium March 7th in the Low Country Invitational at Woodland High School. She did the same thing at the Azalea Invitational at Somerville High School a week later uh, on March 14th. That ended up being the last event of the year before COVID-19 shut everything down the following Monday. Um, this young lady is a Limestone College signee, and she was a state runner-up in the 100-meter 100 100 meter hurdles in 2019. Uh, she has also competed for East Coast Track and Field in the winter and the summer. And in, at one point last year, she was a Hershey USATF Youth Indoor uh, Championship All-American in the 55-meter hurdles. Uh, she is a senior from Hanahan High School. Her name is Amari Smith. Uh, moving on to Boys Track and Field Athlete of the Year. Really, um, this young man is a, a extremely fast sophomore he goes to Kane Bay High School and he was uh, he's another one who was really out to a blazing start this spring before COVID-19 ended things uh, this young man he swept the 100 and the 200 meter dashes at the Sand Lapper Sand Lapper Classic at West Ashland March 7th then at the Azalea you were there you even took a picture of this young man just coming down the track uh, he won the 200 in that event or that that meet um, and then he was a runner-up in the 100 that day um, and really the the thing with this young man is uh, he has a world, a li literally a world-class sprinter and an NCAA champion kind of helping push him. Aileen Bailey, um, she won a gold medal in the 2004 Olympics. She was a multi-time national champion with the University of South Carolina Gamecocks. She helped break this young man down technically to get him to uh, where he's at now. He's a sophomore and in the next two years, he's probably gonna be on top of the podium getting a gold medal down there in Columbia one spring. Uh, this young man's name is Javion Johnson. He's a sophomore at Cane Bay High School. That leads us to our softball player of the year, who I'm not gonna lie, I've always really appreciated this young lady's name. I'll give it to you here in a second. Uh, and speaking of just, just lighting things up before COVID-19 came, brought everything to a screeching halt, this young lady who is a junior leadoff hitter and shortstop for the Berkeley Stags, uh, she's a Presbyterian College commit. She was 16 of 19 at the plate this season for 
Do you know the math? Do you know that batting average? No, not off the top of my head. Okay, if you'd gone to Georgia Tech, you'd know that. She's um, good. Yeah, she's good. Uh, eight, uh, that's a batting average of about 840. 840. So your, your, your leadoff hitter's doing that. You're going to win a lot of games. Speaking of winning a lot of games, uh, the Berkeley Stags went out to the Lady Rebel Invitational. Um, this young lady was 14 to 15 at the plate with eight RBIs, 10 runs, two doubles. Um, and the Stags went 5-0 and in the event. Um, earlier in the year, she was 2-4 for four against Hanahan, and she made a great defensive play. I was there to see it. Hanahan was about to win. Uh, in the bottom of the seventh, line drive. If she doesn't glove it, it's going to the fence. Hanahan's probably clearing the bases and might win that game 7-6. to six. But this young lady snagged it out of the air, completed the double play. Berkeley went on to win the game. I have waxed poetic long enough about this young lady. Uh, she's a junior. Her name is Jersey Silver, and she plays for Berkeley High School. All right, now that takes us, Roger. Now we're back on track, thanks to me. Uh, that brings us to boys. Wait a minute, I thought we were done with track. Boys tennis. Did I say track? You said we're back on track. <laughs> Come on, man. Why are you trying? To... It doesn't take much <laughs> to get me off the rails. <laughs> Sorry, man. All right, so uh, boys tennis, Roger. We're on boys. We're on boys tennis. <laughs> Our boys tennis player of the year is Grayson Mann of Pinewood Prep, uh, a senior. Uh, and what earned him this award was his, his senior leadership. Uh, his coach just doesn't have enough time to, to say all the good things he wants to say about about Grayson. Um, you know, he kind of he stepped up this year, moving from number three singles to number one singles. Was doing real well at number one singles. Uh, had a big win and a key match early in the year against a rival school. Um, that he's really really proud of that. Um, and just you know, uh, just a, an all around great teammate. Uh, Grayson also was a receiver and defensive back for the Pinewood Prep football team. So, you know, that says a lot to his athleticism. Uh, uh, congratulations to Grayson Mann. Congrats. And where would that take us? The boys golf? Boys golf. Last one of the spring, I believe. Last one of the spring. I, th I think it's worth mentioning the spring awards because the season was so short. If we didn't touch on it at the beginning, which I think actually we might have. We did look back at the 2019 season for some of these you know, and didn't guidance. just base it on on like a three game season for some of the sports or whatever. Uh, but you know, again, I think I think all these athletes are deserving. Just did, you know, just wanted to mention you know when I mentioned things about last season. That's why we're doing that. They just didn't have much of a season this year. Yeah, uh, definitely. Boys golfer of the year is going to a Somerville High School senior, and that would be Payne Rutherford. Uh, Payne has been with the team uh, multiple years, I think, since his freshman season, maybe before that. Uh, has always been a contributor, uh, helped them get to the, the state tournament last year and place well. I think he was the place fourth out of the team last year at the state tournament. But this year, when he came back uh, for the 2020 season, he was just really putting in some, some good rounds on the golf course. And... Um, you know, I, I, I think he, he was the top golfer at one meet and then was like second or third for, on the team in another. But uh, he's kind of helped turn Somerville's uh, program around the last few years. There for a while, Fort Dorchester and some other schools were having more luck than Somerville boys were having. But that changed last year, and Payne Rutherford was a big part of that. Um, I'm thinking, see. I'm thinking you could beat Payne in golf. What do you think? I could not beat anybody in golf. I wonder if he's named he's after Payne Stewart. Think about it. I should ask. I might, I might do that. If you'd been doing your job, we'd have known that. <laughs> uh, right. But, you know, they, they were the region champs last year. Key part of that. Um, went to the state tournament, uh, and he finished with a 171 score, which was the fourth best on the team at the state meet. Congratulations to Payne. All right, that wraps up spring sports. And now we move on to our superlative uh, awards. Uh, coming up, we'll, we'll have some awards for courage, for service, uh, some, some academic awards. Um, and these are, these are definitely fun ones to give out, Roger. Yep, they sure are. All right, that brings us now to, like I said, one of our superlative awards. Uh, it's our courage award. We, we, we try to give this to somebody who I mean, really simply just displays courage and either coming back from a uh, medical incident or they're dealing with, they've dealt with something or like this year's winner, 
they have the heart of a lion. Um, our this year's winner, um, he embodies the statement: "It's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog." Uh, he is a senior at Stratford High School. He was a football player, and while in this young man's head he is six three, two hundred pounds, in reality. Physically, he's about 5'6", 140 to 145 pounds. That's a small guy to be playing 5A football. And I've watched the video of this young man. He is 5'6", 145, but he does play as big as he thinks he is. And uh, he, he doesn't mind sticking his nose in there and trying to get physical and making tackles. Uh, this year for the Knights as a senior, he made three interceptions. He won um, a defensive award for them. He also won the Knight Pride Award. He has earned a scholarship opportunity based on what they saw on film, Methodist University in North Carolina offered a young man a scholarship. He's going to get an opportunity to go play college football. Uh, as I said, this young man is a senior at Stratford High School. His name is Tamir Simons. He played defensive back for the Knights. All right. Uh, that brings us to our service award. That's an award that doesn't, ever, uh, doesn't necessarily go to a student. A lot of times it goes to an adult because it's for um, you know people who do a lot of volunteer work people who are just kind of like uh, not selfish and help a team or an athletic program out. Um, a lot of you probably know this name, or if not, you would recognize him on the sidelines because he's, he's always there. Uh, Will Chitty, who works closely with the Somerville High School Athletic Department, is our service award winner. He, uh, he helps them with their website. He manages their you know, Facebook, Twitter, all their, their social media accounts. And uh, he's the guy you see with the camera running down the sideline at the football game or, or you know, in the gym uh, going from one end to the other constantly just, uh, you know, getting the, down on his knee for the low shot, getting up in the stands, taking shots of the fans. He's just full of energy, and that's what, that's what that's, that school administration loves about him. Most of the work he does uh, for that school is volunteer. Um, he is a, a self-taught graphic designer by trade. Um, and so he helps them out, you know, with just anything like that that he can. And he just also tries to, you know, serve as an example for the athletes. Uh, when I talked to him, he, he talked about how much he enjoys watching a kid, you know, who he met when he was a freshman on the JV team blossom into this, you know, stud athlete and get a scholarship to go play D1, whatever, baseball or football, or whatever. Um, and he, uh, you know, what the people around the school tell me is he, you know the kids look up to him and he and he does a good job of you know taking time to spend time with those kids not just taking their pictures so congratulations to will chitty well-deserved uh, recipient of our service award so where are we at there rob uh leadership leadership uh awards we'll give one for male and we'll give one for female uh the the male leadership award is going to fort dorchester senior Brandon Johnson. Uh, he serves as the anchor for the Fort Dorchester line, uh, really for the whole Fort Dorchester defense, and they had uh, multiple D1 guys on, on that defense this year. Uh, you know, some who landed D1 scholarships, some who probably could have, but decided to go to a D2 school or, you know, pursue other interests. But anyway, or maybe perhaps uh, might still be, you know, looking at some schools. But anyway, uh, Brandon Johnson, uh, what Steve LaPrade tells me about him is that he kind of kept all those guys straight. It's great to have all that talent, but you need somebody leading them and, you know, keeping them focused on the task at hand so that, it's, you know, things don't uh, go awry, so to speak. Uh, Brandon, um, let's see, he was an All-State player. Uh, he had uh, more than 60 tackles as a senior, helped the Patriots to an 11-1 record. And then in November, he signed with the United States Naval Academy. Uh, and, you know, what? that just speaks of leadership right there. They vet yeah. those, those players that go into the military academies pretty well. And, uh, you know, he's, he's going to uh, do well there, I think, playing football for the for the midshipman and also uh, pursuing an engineering degree, I believe is what he told me he's going to major in. So congratulations to Brandon Johnson. The, the female leadership award, also going to a Fort Dorchester athlete, and that is Zoe Conrad. Uh, 
four-time letterman for the Lady Patriots soccer team. Uh, she is she's just uh, her coach says she's a natural born leader uh, team captain for the past two seasons and uh, something else that sticks out about this young lady is uh, she's been a team captain and and leader on the soccer team while also holding down a, a you know working like sometimes up to 30 hours a week at chick-fil-a uh, she her mother is in the Air Force and her junior year uh, her mother got shipped off overseas, and so she stepped up and like helped her father out uh, with her with her younger sister, doing things like making sure her uh, younger sister, you know, got fed and got to soccer practice because she's also a soccer player. Uh, so she did that, and she's just uh, you know everything she does. She does a lot of volunteer work with things like kindness cleans up events, reading to elementary school kids. Uh, the list just goes on and on. She just, uh, you know, everything about her uh, speaks speaks leadership. And she is going to play soccer for the Citadel next school year um, and will graduate with the, the Diploma of Distinction. That sounds like an excellent, I mean, a, an exceptional young lady who is deserving of that award. That leads us in, speaking of exceptional, that leads us to our individual performance of the year. Uh, this young man is a senior at Goose Creek High School. He was a candidate, I mean, a really strong candidate for our football player of the year. Um, like I said, we had several guys that could have won that award. Uh, well, this young man is getting a different award. Uh, it's our performance of the year. It's usually what we give to uh, a, a, an athlete who has a just a tremendous uh, individual performance in a playoff game or a game or something that just really stands out. Um, the, this, like I said, this young man in the playoffs against Somerville, second round game, the game that got moved to Monday, there was some chirping back and forth about you know Goose Creek being scared to play Somerville. Well, this young man took it to heart. He is the uh, quarterback of the Gators. He is uh, Emmanuel Mukwamu. Well, in the game, the game that we're talking about in the playoffs, Manny uh, took it upon himself to just basically blow up the Green Wave. He had uh, 12. Of, he con connected on 12 of 16 passes for 142 yards. He threw four touchdown passes in the 42-21 uh, victory. And then on the ground, when Goose Creek coaches decided to cut him loose the second part, second part of the year. Um, he, he became real skilled at that, and he was running through mud all night. But he, he churned out 192 yards on 18 carries. Um, yeah, and scored on a 35-yard run in the second half to kind of ice it. Uh, as I said, um, that victory, that 42-21 victory, put Goose Creek into the next round of the playoffs, which is big for them because they hadn't won a playoff game since 2015. So for, for Manny to guide them past Somerville, who's a quality football team, quality tradition, um, for him to – have a hand in five touchdown passes or five touchdowns in a playoff game in a second round game where there was some emotion involved uh, b b based on because you remember they, they moved the game back from a Friday to a Monday right um, and anyway he uh, he had a heck of a game one of the best games I've individually seen a kid having a while he finished the year with 2,500 yards passing and 35 touchdowns he rushed for over 900 yards and 11 touchdowns he is headed to Hutchinson Community College in Kansas, one of the premier junior colleges in the country. Again, that young man's name is uh, Manny Mukwamu, Emmanuel Mukwamu, uh, senior from Goose Creek High School. Yeah, I was at that game as you, were you, and it was an impressive performance. Yeah, he, I mean, he just he really did take that game over. He, Somerville just had no answer. He was he was so dialed in that night. Somerville had no chance to stop him. Okay, okay. Uh, that that leads us to our comeback of the year, which also involved football. Um, and I was there to see this. I'm not sure if you were there. I don't think you were. But uh, anyway, this is a fo this was a football game between Berkeley High School and Somerville. Uh, Berkeley was coming off a 44 nothing loss to Fort Dorchester the week earlier, um, and Berkeley really, you know, was kind of demoralized by that a little bit. Well, then right out of the gate against Somerville, they get down 31 to 13 in the first half, um, and you know you you think they're about to get run out of the building again, but then. Uh, they kind of began to put some defensive stops together. Uh, offensively, they began to click a little bit more. So they were down 31-13 in the first half. They cut it to 31-20 by the end of the first half. Berkeley kept coming. Um, then in the second half, Somerville still led 34-27 late in the game. Berkeley goes down, gets a touchdown and an extra point. 
to uh, force overtime. And then in OT, the Berkeley defense makes a stop, holds them to a field goal. And then in OT, um, the quarterback for Berkeley, Willie Chisholm, hit um, Hakeem Meggett in the end zone for a touchdown to win the game. Uh, that final score of that game was uh, 40 to 37, and it was seriously one of the best games I've ever seen. Berkeley was down 31 to 13, came back to win uh, 40 to 37, and there was a little bit of revenge factor there because Somerville had knocked Berkeley out of the playoffs the year before. Right. And uh, that night was a huge night for Chisholm, like running and throwing the ball. I also know he had a he hit he hit Meggett for three touchdown passes. It was a it was really one of the best games I've seen all year. I don't know if it's ever if it's on YouTube, but if it's ever on YouTube and you get a chance to take it in and watch it, it's an excellent game. Uh, our comeback of the year was Berkeley High School football versus Somerville this year. Stags won 40 to 37 after being down 31 13. That leads us to some academic awards, Roger. Yes, it does. Uh, our first uh, academic award, so to speak, is our Scholar Athlete of the Year for a female. And that's going to be Cameron Fox, senior at Somerville High School. Uh, she was the defensive specialist for the Somerville volleyball team this year. Uh, Four-year letterman for the varsity team. Started with the Green Wave uh, program when she was in uh, seventh grade, I believe. Um, but she had moved up to the varsity by the time she was a freshman. Uh, her coach just couldn't say enough about her. Just all kind of adjectives to describe this young lady. Uh, infectious smile, team leader. Um, you know, inf uh, has an impact on everybody she meets. Uh, uh, she was Miss uh, 2019, uh, Miss Greenwave Teen. Uh, created a safe school initiative, and of course, uh, some of the. Uh, let's just. Let's just get to the punch here, Rob. <laughs> Smart girl. Uh, Academic-wise, uh, she, she's going to graduate with a Diploma of Distinction as Somerville Salutatorian uh, with an associate's degree from Trident Technical College. And I'm going to mispronounce this one, but uh, Summa Cum Laude, is that right? That's right. Summa Cum Laude from Tech uh, is planning to pursue a doctorate's degree in pharmacy. Uh, so I'm sure that that young lady has a promising academic uh, career in college ahead of her and Cameron Fox congratulations to you for uh, receiving this award um, I will try to top the female athlete of the year with another rocket scientist uh, this young man is a senior at Cane Bay High School he has a grade point average I kid you not Roger it really is probably probably double mine for sure <laughs> his grade point average is over five it's north of five they haven't finalized it yet but I, th I think it was in the 5.2 range <laughs> which I said is probably double mine uh, this young man is also a tremendous athlete he, uh, he he has an opportunity to run cross country and track and field at the Citadel uh, the Citadel coach if you look at the press release said this young man will have an opportunity to contribute right away as a freshman most freshmen don't get an opportunity to kind of be relevant on their college well many freshmen do not get a chance to be relevant on their college sports teams well this young man does um and he is a like i said a cross-country runner for the uh, cobras he went to the state meet with them on three occasions and he was an alternate on one of their um uh state qualifying four by eight teams and, and probably probably would have been in the mix for something this spring but it got cut short um he really is a hard worker according to his coaches and he's a guy that you can depend on and um, I think in college you'll have an opportunity to, to excel because they have some longer running distances like not just 5k 8k then you got longer distances in track uh, so this young man has a very bright future um, his name is Robert Perricone he's a senior from uh, Cane Bay High School and um, he might be smarter than your athlete of the year. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't know. That sounds pretty smart. That's two, that is two brilliant people for sure. Uh, all right, well, so where are we at now, Roger? Uh, team of the year, right? Team of the year. Yep. Um, clearly, uh, Georgia right. Bulldogs. <laughs> um, no, that would be uh, that would be the. Ah, should, I, should I mention who it is? Okay, the team of the year is a state champion for the third time in the last four seasons. And what's remarkable about what they did this winter was, you know, you're used to this team just having so many athletes. 
and being able to just roll this great team out there and just beat you athletically without scheming or without any kind of uh, game plan. They're just so good. Well, this year they lost, they had lost eight people off of last year's team. They did, they did bring back some key players. One of uh, those was our girls basketball player of the year, Anaya Oliver. And, um, you know, they just, uh, I don't think anybody really expected them to be able to win a state championship, but what they did was they played really good defense. They got games into the second half. They would spread the floor, take the air out, air out of the ball if they had to. And uh, while they were used to winning by 40, this team was, um, you know, okay winning real tight ball games, trying to get into the fourth quarter and make free throws, which is kind of how they did in the state championship game. They were down um, by five points at one point. I know they, they had a 10, 10 nothing run in the, in the fourth quarter to beat Clover um, 40, I believe that score was 42 to 38. And um, they became the state champions again for the third time in the four, four years. Uh, it was the Goose Creek Lady Gators. Uh, State uh, fourth state championship overall for for them, and it was really a job well done because I don't think anybody expected them. If you saw them play, you could tell they were different from what they had been in the past. But um, Tim Baldwin is an excellent coach, and that leads us to our coach of the year. Yep. Who's our coach of the year? Uh, Tim Baldwin. <laughs> okay. Tim Baldwin is our coach of the year for a lot of the reasons that I just said. Um, you know, I, I, th I think there was, um, well, but before we get uh, to waxing poetic on Tim, uh, we have, it, our Coach of the Year Award now, thank you to the McKissick family, is now the John McKissick Memorial Award winner, which is um, an ideal name for an award for a coaching award because John McKissick was such a, a magnificent coach and made a difference in so many kids' lives. And uh, we named it um, the John McKissick Memorial Award. Just, just real quick, talk about McKissick and his legacy and, you know, people definitely want to be like him. Right, unfortunately, you know, John passed away in November, uh, and, and that's, a, that's a tough loss for the Somerville community as far as the, the, the South Carolina sports world. Absolutely. I mean, the, the man was beloved everywhere. Uh, one of the nicest men you would ever, ever meet, Absolutely. you know. Um, he, he holds the record for most, most uh, coaching wins. Uh, but he, he doesn't go around bragging about it. You know, I mean, he's just the most, it was, mo was the most down to earth coach there was around here and, and uh, always helpful when he was an active coach and supported the Green Wave after he retired. Um, it was just a great man and I can't think of a better person to, to name our, our coaching award for. I, I think a lot of people will, well, it'll make it a little bit more special to get the John McKissick coaching award especially like you know i'm sure eventually there'll be a somerville coach who uh who'll get this award from us and i think sure. that's gonna that's gonna be something that somebody would be proud to have in their trophy case Ab ab absolutely um well you know going back to our coach of the year like i said his name is tim baldwin goose creek's girls basketball coach i think people thought that he always just did it by out athleting people well this year he proved that he could take a team with a lot lesser talent he, he, he could do more with less and that's what he did this year. They won a state championship. A couple of thing, more things about um, Baldwin. He has over 400 career victories. He has four state championships, um, which I, I mean, I think that's more than any coach in Berkeley County School District right now. Uh, and I talked I talk to the AD and um, Chris Buckholtz, and he waxed poetic about Baldwin, not just as a coach, but as a mentor to the, the students in the school, and uh, said that, you know, look, it, Tim is accomplishing, much like John McKissick. He, you know, it wasn't by, it's not by accident yeah. that they have been able to excel at the level that they have based on having a plan, being a good person, caring about the kids. And, you know, our, our coach of the year this year is Tim Baldwin, and he embodies everything um, that John McKissick was about. And we're proud to announce Tim as the John McKissick Memorial uh, Award winner. Uh, there were multiple teams in the low country this year who thought this is the year we beat Goose Creek girls, you know, I think we got them this year. And so uh, Tim did a really good job of, of leading that team. And, and I think those girls stepped up. And so, you know, those two basketball honors certainly go, go into the right place this year. Definitely. He proved he could out coach you. He didn't have to out athlete. Okay, Roger, we are getting down to the end of our awards list. I'm turning it over to you now for our male athlete of the year, drum roll. 
these are our two big awards, really. I mean, if I was an athlete in high school, this is the one I'd won if I, if I you know, was of that caliber. But um, I would definitely be happy to win any one of these. Yeah, I, yeah, I, th I think yeah. kind of what we, what we look at here, too. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. I'm a master at cutting you off. I can't help it. Um, we know what we took into account, Roger, was kid, young, young people who played multiple sports, right. who were good in the classroom, and um, so we like to give our male and female athlete of the year awards to people who make their mark in multiple sports, right? right? I do, yeah. I always prefer that unless there's there has been a year where there's somebody who is so dominant in one sport. Right. But but for the most part, I think that's what this award is for. Somebody who who shines in more than one way. All right, let's go. Um, and with no further ado, our male athlete of the year, uh, Somerville High School senior Brody Hopkins. Brody uh, was a big playmaker both for the Green Wave football team and the Green Wave baseball team. He has chose to pursue uh, baseball in college. He's signed with the College of Charleston, and I'm sure he'll do well there. Um, let's talk about his football career, and then we'll, since he's going to play baseball, let's talk about football and then get to his baseball. Uh, on the football field, he was uh, Greenway's starting punter. Their leading receiver as a senior, their second leading receiver as a junior. Uh, uh, he also would jump over and play defense when needed to and return kicks. I mean, he just could do it all, and he was just one of those players. You like to see it when, when, when Brody gets the ball in his hands. You never know when he's going to break one, so he's fun to watch. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, his teammates loved him. Um, you know, led, uh, led the Green Wave to uh, two successful seasons there. Uh, okay, now on baseball diamond, uh, he was hitting 320. Uh, when the when the you know virus cut the season short with two doubles, a home run, and ten RBIs, um, on the mound he was one and zero with a 2.40 ERA and ten strikeouts. Also in 2019, he helped the Green Wave uh, advance to the district finals, and they won their district, uh, the District Five championship. Uh, and finished with a 22-11 and 11 record before being eliminated uh, before they got a chance to compete for a state title. But still a fabulous season, and Brody uh, was, um, was a big part of that. Uh, he was uh, all-state honorable mention for football. He was the Region 8 Football Athlete of the Year. Uh, no, no, Region 8 Football all region team sorry about that we've already we've already mentioned the football player of the year uh played in the north south game um uh, and this is young man i'm looking forward to watching in the future his brother uh tj uh, was drafted by the major league baseball cincinnati uh, uh is hoping to play you know uh, for the reds one day so it'll be interesting to see how that brother rivalry goes and if and if if Brody can, can do as much as uh, TJ's done. Uh, well, he's certainly very athletic. I've been impressed with him as a playmaker in football, the times I've seen him play. And I, I'll be willing to bet you could put him on the basketball court and he could dunk, uh, make three-point shots. I mean, he's just that kind of quality athlete. And I like the fact that he's going to college at Charleston uh, to play baseball. My brother played baseball there. He was a pretty good player there. And I still, I still follow the program to this day. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, really, I, I, basically just echoing what you said, Brody Hopkins is a, a fantastic athlete, very deserving of the award, and I hope he does well um, over at the College of Charleston. Go Cougars. That leads us in. Are you done? Well, I'll just add that uh, he can indeed hit three-point shots. That Somerville and Ashley Ridge have a, a three-point contest during the halftime of the boys game every year. And the last two years, I believe, I know this year, Brody went out there and was popping three-pointers and then, you know, just to just have a little fun uh, – before the contest was other, just went in and slammed it. So, yeah, he could play basketball. I bet. I wonder why he didn't. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, our female athlete of the year, uh, I'm not going to announce her name just yet. I'm going to kind of carry you through her um, accolades. Uh, this young lady is a senior at Hanahan High School. She is an exceptional student athlete. Uh, she made her mark in three sports for the uh, Hanahan girls teams. Um, she played volleyball in the fall she played basketball in this winter and she was a softball player in the spring um, softball was probably her better sport she was an all-state selection last year she batted i say last year i mean 2019 because this season was cut short she batted 368 with 36 rbis and 22 runs scored as 
Hanahan made it to the lower state championship game in 2019. Um, and so far in uh, softball this spring, she was off to a great start. She had uh, three hits in the game against Barkley, and then in the, in the very last game of the season over at Cane Bay High School, this young lady, uh, she had a three-run homer. She drove in six runs and a 13-0 win over Cane Bay. Um, again, she also played basketball. She averaged a double-double uh, this year and last year. She's a two-time all-region selection. Uh, she, as I said earlier, she played volleyball. She was a key contributor there. And this young lady is another one who probably just as easily could have been an academic award winner. She has a GPA of 4.82. She is top 20 in the class of 2020. And she's a member of the National Honor Society and Beta Club. And now listen, there's no truth to the rumor that we're giving this award because she's going to Clemson. <laughs> She's going to Clemson University. She plans to major in engineering. Uh, she is the daughter of Miriam Johnson and Kevin Voorhees, the winner of our Female Athlete of the Year for 2019 and 2020, is uh, an exceptional young lady by the name of Brooke Voorhees. Congratulations to Brooke for being the Female Athlete of the Year, and congratulations to all of our athletes that won this year and their parents, the people who coached them up, all the people that played a role in getting them to their practices and to their games, um, the teachers that whispered words of encouragement, whatever it took to, to help these athletes get where they got today with these awards. Um, you know, <laughs> if we were in a room, we'd ask you to all take a standing ovation because you can should be taking one for yourself and patting yourself on the back. And certainly if you won an award this year, um, Congratulations, and if you're coming back next year, maybe you'll have an opportunity to win in 2021 when we hope that we can get the Best of Prep Sports Awards banquet back to what it should be. It's us gathering as a group, eating some food, having a speaker to honor these athletes. I know um, last year we had George Rogers, and George, uh, former Heisman Trophy winner from the University of South Carolina, and it was a huge hit. Everybody was excited to hear George talk, he had a great story. Also, he didn't mind bringing his bling, uh, <laughs> you know, his Heisman Trophy. That thing was heavy, by the way. And he had, his, he had some uh, rings and stuff, so people enjoyed that. And that's what we hope to get back to next spring. Hopefully you enjoyed today. We did the best that we could given the, given the, cir uh, given the circumstances and the situation. Also, we'd like to add, very important, uh, all of your plaques are here. We have, we're at 103 Journal Alley in Somerville. Um, the, our hours are not quite what they were. I don't know those uh, right off the top of my head, but uh, just before, before you come, make sure that we're open. I think we're open three days a week for a few hours. We have your plaques. Congratulations, everybody. Let's hurry up and get this COVID-19 behind us and let's get back to, um, let's get back to living our lives. And um, we'll see you in the fall for Football Talk.